<coughs> Hi, good day everyone. So welcome to my uh, tea test or tea distribution video. Um, so this is a tea distribution video. And uh, this is me again, uh, so you've known me. Um, here is the word that I wrote. Let's use a red pen now. Sample. So tea test is a sample distribution test. What is a sample distribution test? It is a test taken from the population test. So remember uh, in my Z uh, video, Z distribution video, I talk about um, Z distribution being the population, like Malaysia, for instance. But if you take states in Malaysia, let's say Selangor or uh, KL or Putrajaya, so these certain states will be the sample tests. Second analogy, maybe the classroom that we have, this whole class is my population, but if I break into tutorials and compare it, and compare uh, the tutorial classes between them, therefore these are my sample tests. So a t-test is a small samples within the Zach test. Okay. All right. So a few of these slides is repetitive with the Zach test. We still talk about accuracy and precision, whereby we are referring to the plots that we have in the distribution plot. Okay. We want the middle or the mean to have more data compared to the sides. Right. This is less, less and more that is why we have a huge lump in the middle because more of the data is plotted within or inside or near or at the mean um, uh, again uh, you will see uh, t-test here t-test is when standard deviation or variance is not given right not given okay so let's go straight to this one so in this time, you don't have these two, standard deviation and standard uh, variance are not given. But you must calculate these two. Calculate variance, calculate standard deviation, one of them or both of them, right? So the symbol is S uh, squared for variance and S for standard deviation. The uh, 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 hypothesis are still the same. The two groups, for example, the classroom from uh, tutorial from uh, one day to the next day, are they the same? Are they different? But still, for t test, we are talking about two groups only, or two columns in the table, right? And this is the um, uh, distribution chart, or bell curve graph, you want to call it for t test. It's similar to z test, but the only difference is the critical value comes not from the Z uh, statistical table, it comes from the uh, t-test statistical table. All right, this one you can see on page number three from um, the, the uh, uh, Times uh, portal. Right, so here you have degrees of freedom. The difference with with, uh, with t uh, Z test is we have degree of freedom now, and you don't have to divide your alpha because your alpha is already two tail test. Or one tail test. If it's a 10% two tail test, we choose this one, right? If it's a one tail test, 5%, uh, then we choose this one, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so usually, uh, we should have our degree of freedom. For example, let's say this one degree of freedom is around 19, right? Let's say it's 19, and we use uh, two tail tests for 5%, and we have 2.03 or maybe 19, 2.10. So this one here, the critical uh, region, critical value, the binding, bounding region will be given by the table. So in this case, from the left is negative and from the right is positive with similar number. All right, straight ahead to case study. It's going to be very short. Now, we are still looking at the uh, mortar or cement case. We want to compare between the old formula or recipe of cement and the new one. Which one of these two is stronger? Which one of these two is weaker? But now, instead of being given the standard deviations or the variance or both of them, we don't have it. So simply, we use uh, this equation that using the average 
and still use the same thing and again we have no variance or we don't, no standard deviation so we must calculate this too you see now it is no more uh, uh, sigma it is now s s squared one for group number one s squared two for variance group number two so once we have done s1 and s2 calculation we need to perform this sp squared where sp squared is taken from the one that you've calculated just now and then you can put it here all right um uh so uh, you can see here there are two uh, versions of this question uh, sometimes you can use sp sometimes if you don't want to use sp you can use straight ahead this equation both of them will be given marks right if you use this route no sp then i give you marks if you decide to use uh, sp without uh, the two uh, uh, s1 and s2 also i give you the same mark right okay the equation once you have done sp you can put it here and you get your t0 or you can use your s1 squared s2 squared in this here and you get your t0 as well all right let's go to the case study so we have still have the same average this one need to be calculated so and this one also need to be calculated this one is given these are the samples number i believe i have a space there to write the sample calculation now for t test is quite long i'm going to use uh, blue uh, ink right and i'm going to write here s1 squared to do this calculation the formula is a sigma from the first number until n that means the whole sample right and the observation y i minus y bar square them and divide by n minus one right n minus one okay so the one below here is a degree of freedom oh, i need to write it properly all right give me a moment degree of freedom all right so this is the observation and this one of course the average okay um right so the calculation take the blue pen again will be like this the first number or the first uh number let's see what is it is let's say for s1 right s1 16.85 so let's go back to that page the first number will be let's rewrite this give me a moment The first number is 1685 16.85 minus the average for group 1 16.76 put a bracket and square them plus what's the second number second number is 16.4 so let's Oh, I memorized it. 16.4 16.4 minus 16.76 yes. 16 squared plus why do we plus because we are doing summation right we are doing summation third number 17 to 1 so bracket 17.21 minus 16.76 squared now in final exam you don't have time do this dot 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 and maybe take the last two numbers 16.59 16.59 16.57 16.59 minus 16.76 
plus 16 I have short term memory 5 7 right this whole thing divided by 10 sample minus 1 okay and you will have your s squared which is 0 0.1 So I'm going to write here S squared. I didn't square root it. If you want to square root it, you have that number there. More or less, yeah? More or less. So S2 is similarly the same. From the first number to the end of the sample, YI, Y bar, dot by sample minus 1. Alright, and you get your S2. So I'll go straight ahead and do this one. So you see we have our S1, S2, and originally the equation have squares. Therefore, don't square them because it is the variance, right? 0 0.1 is the variance. For S1, 0 0.061 is the variance for S2. Don't square them. And you have this 0, 0.0. 8, 1 for sp squared and then you can square root it and you have this value this value you can put it here and put all the values in you have your y bar 1 y bar 2 your sp your sample number and you receive a negative value that means it comes from the left side All right, now let's go to the table. So we have degree of freedom of 10 plus 10 because you have two groups minus 2. It's actually uh, 10 minus 1 plus 10 minus 1. So it's actually 10 plus 10 minus 2 mathematically. So it is 18, right? And we are using 5% alpha 2 tail test. Remember, all my exams and tests, they are all two tail tests. Okay, so our bounding number is 2.101. So here is our 2.101. Alright, 2.101 negative, 2.01 positive. Our T0 calculation is negative 2.20, which lies here, and therefore K0 accepted. Please, please write why it is this. So what is it about? Cement. Sorry. Both cements are hair. Are having different strength. So technically, it has a similar answer to the Zach test that we did in our Zach video, but we are using a T test. Alright, so they are having different strength. Okay, now we should do all the confidence interval. The confidence interval, just like Zach test that you have seen in the uh, question and answer, instead of using Z, we are using T. Now here again, T alpha divided by 2 does not mean it is 5% divided by 2, yeah? It just means 2 tails test. Okay, 2 tail test. And this one is the degree of freedom. This one comes from the left. This one comes from the right. And you still have mu1 minus mu2 in between. Right, so what you need to do is just put in these answers and see what are the confidence interval, just like as we discussed in Zach test. So, uh, please uh, have a look at my t-test question and answer video for further uh, info and reference about the sample test or t-distribution test. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.